In this video, I'm going to have a look at downloading a Windows 10 development environment virtual machine for VMware Player using Ubuntu 2004 as a host operating system. So let's go ahead and download VMware Workstation Player. So I want to select version 16 and I want to select VMware Workstation Player 16.00 for Linux 64-bit. Now, in order to install VMware Workstation Player, we're going to need to use the terminal. And it's got some prerequisites, so we'll need to install these first. So I'm going to type in sudo, which is super user do, and then apt, which is advanced package tool, and then install and what I want to install is build-essential. So these are the prerequisites for VMware Player. Type in Y to confirm the install. And once it's installed, we can go ahead and change the directory to downloads. And if we just right click the downloaded file and include the extension, what we can type in is sudo and then sh, which stands for shell, and then install the bundle file. Okay, so now that VMware Workstation Player is installed, we can go ahead and launch it. So if we select all applications, we can launch VMware Player and accept the license agreement. And we can opt for product updates and we can opt to either be in or out of the customer experience program. So if you're using a VMware Workstation Player commercially, you'll need a product key. Otherwise you can use it for free for home and non-commercial use. So next we're going to need to download our Windows 10 enterprise evaluation virtual machine and we can get this from Microsoft's website. Now the download here is quite large it's about 20 gigabytes so I'm going to select the VMware download and in my case the first attempt I got a network error so I needed to try again. So the reason that this VM is so big is because it has Windows 10 and it also has a number of developer tools such as Visual Studio 2019, Visual Studio Code, Windows 10 SDK and Windows Subsystem for Linux and developer mode enabled. So it's essentially designed to be used as a kind of throwaway virtual machine so it'll last for about 50 days and then it will expire, but you're expected basically to start fresh with a new VM after 50 days. And you use this to test things out on Windows 10 as a developer. And after that time, you basically download the next up-to-date virtual machine and use that instead. Okay, so now that the download is complete, I'm just going to check the checksums of the zip file. So to do this, I'm going to open up the downloads folder and open up the terminal in the downloads folder and type in SHA256SUM and then space and copy and paste the zip file along with its extension. And the checksums should match those listed by Microsoft. And they do, so I know that this is okay. So I'm just going to right click and extract it to documents. So it's a large file, so it will take a while to perform the extract. Okay, so the next thing you want to check is whether you've got your virtualization technologies enabled in your UFI BI setup. So power off your system and power up and press F2 to enter the UFI BI setup. In a Lenovo, press F1 instead. Now scroll down till you get to virtualization support and you want to enable Intel virtualization technology and VT for direct input output. You don't need trusted execution. 
unless you're going to install Windows 10 Pro using BitLocker, in which case you use Trusted Execution to pass the TPM from the host PC to the virtual machine. And if you've installed Ubuntu 2004 using a secure boot and machine owner key, then secure boot should be enabled. So go ahead and save the virtualization settings if you've changed them and then boot back into Ubuntu 2004. So now we can go ahead and launch VMware Player and we can select open a virtual machine and then we can navigate to the documents folder and select our Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation and select import. So it will take a moment to perform the import. And if you select power on, you'll notice that you get this error. So essentially what's going on is VMware Workstation Player for a Windows 10 guest requires additional services and they should be ran when Ubuntu boots. Now because Secure Boot is enabled, these services are blocked. So basically you need to create a new machine owner key with these services. So to do that, we'll follow their instructions and we'll copy and paste the first line of code to create a new machine owner key. Then we're going to add the two services to it. And because we're using super user do, we'll need to input our password in order to proceed. Now the last command is to actually send the new machine owner key to the UFI bias. And when you do this, you'll need to create a new machine owner key password and confirm it. And then you'll need to use this within your UFI bias. Now, unfortunately, when you try this command, it doesn't work. So you need to elevate this command using root privileges. So type in sudo and then space and then su and then type in the command. Once again, create a password and then confirm it. So now we can exit and then reboot. And as we reboot, we'll be taken into the machine owner key management. So select enter and then select enroll machine owner key and then select continue and then select yes. Now input your machine owner key and type enter. And then select reboot. So now you should boot using a UFI boot with secure boot and the machine owner key should be added to the boot, adding the two VMware services that are required for the Windows 10 guest. So I'm going to edit the virtual machine settings. Now the settings are quite particular. So if you up the memory, you'll get a warning message. And if you up the number of processors to two, it works okay, but if you go any higher, you'll get a blue screen of death. You can change the USB settings to 3.1. If you accelerate the video, however, you'll get a boot problem. So don't do that. Use the default settings. And even with these settings, in my case, the virtual machine freezes during the first time boot. So to the top, I had to select virtual machine and then power and then restart the virtual machine. And after the restart, it booted correctly as expected. Now VMware tools are pre-installed with this Windows 10 virtual machine. So you should just be able to connect to the internet. And when you resize the virtual machine, it should automatically adjust in its size. Now, if I just go ahead and create an image, 
Let's just create a screenshot of the desktop. And we can use this image to see if drag and drop is working correctly. So it seems that I can drag to the Ubuntu folder, but I get this error while copying. So I needed to go to virtual machine and the virtual machine settings and then options and then shared folders to always enabled and also time synchronization. So we'll synchronize the guest time with the host time and then select save. So now if I just right click the image file and select copy, I can go ahead and paste it. And if I just rename it just to modify it, I can then test how it is going the other way about. So the drag and drop doesn't seem to work going the other way about. So if I just right click it and select copy and use the right click context menu, it seems to work okay. So just to highlight the error messages that display when the virtual machine settings are changed, I'm just going to power off the virtual machine and I'm going to modify the virtual machine configuration file. So if I up the memory to four gigabytes, and power on the virtual machine, I get this following warning when the virtual machine attempts to boot. So this one's kind of minor, we can just select OK, and the virtual machine boots as expected. So if we press Control Shift and Escape and open up the Task Manager, then we can see that the virtual machine has four gigs of RAM and the CPU has two virtual processors. So if I power off the virtual machine and now change the virtual machine settings once again, this time upping the number of processors from two to four. Then what happens is this blue screen of death and a number of people are essentially reporting the same problem when they increase the number of processors from two to four or a higher number than four. Okay, so if you've got this, you're basically going to need to power off the virtual machine and then modify the virtual machine configuration file once again. So two seems to be safe. Let me just check that it's working again. And now I'm just going to try and enable the 3D graphics. So this doesn't seem to work too well. So when I launch the virtual machine, I basically get a warning saying that it's not available. So I'll just go ahead and disable this setting in the virtual machine configuration file. And this seems to be the optimum settings for the virtual machine.